again. Well, I was discussing about uh, uh, the point number six, uh, the step number six. I, I was letting you know that if you find cross loading, it means uh, some correlation between uh, the factors of different constructs or different, uh, you can say, Myers or different scales uh, with a greater than 75% correlation. It means no. cross loadings. I need to mute all. Just a minute. No, no, no. All right. I was letting you know that uh, uh, when you find some cross loading which is greater than 75%, then you need to start. Uh, with the lowest absolute maximum loading on all the factors and rerun. So you need to remove the items with a cross loading greater than 75%. So as a step seven, once the solution has stabilized, check the average within and between factor correlation. To obtain the factor, use a principal component analysis with the identified items and save the regression score. If there is not an acceptable difference between within and between factor average uh, correlation, try an oblique rotation uh, method instead. So this method will be applied when you uh, you have uh, the factors with high correlation between them. So you need to use this method, but uh, at you need to start from the very max method at first because uh, at the start we we doesn't uh, basically. Uh, uh, judge whether the factors are correlated or not. So start with the very max procedure, uh, which suppose that uh, uh, your factors are uncorrelated. But if it is found during the procedure that your factors are highly correlated and your cro cross loading is greater than 75%, then you need to use the oblique rotation uh, procedure. That is uh, when the correlation is high between the factors. So all these things uh, you you will let let know during the procedure so the next thing is step number 8 which is the second last step uh, during efa procedure uh, step 8 provided the average within factor correlation is now higher than the average between factor correlation a number of final checks should be made uh, check that proportion of total variance explained by the retained factor is at least 50%. This is, this is the criteria that we are going to check uh, in the output file, that whether the total explained variance or total variance explained is at least 50%. But uh, if this value is less than 50%, we need to verify whether we have some factors uh, having the factor loading less than 0 0.30 or we may have uh, some high correlation within the factors. So we need to verify this value in the total variance explained. Then we need to check the adequacy of sample size using KMO statistic. It is It, it will be provided as a output file. A minimum acceptable score for this test is 0 0.5 as per Kaser 1974. So we need to check whether our minimum requirement with this value is met or not. If the sample size is less than 300, check the average commonality of retained items. So this is another criteria you need to verify uh, if you have a sample less than 300. An average value above 0 0.60 is acceptable for sample less than 100. So if your sample is less than 100, your average commonality value uh, should be 0 0.60 as an acceptable value. An average value between 0 0.5 and 0 0.6 is acceptable for a sample between 100 to 200. So if your sample is between 100 to 200, it means uh, uh, the commonality value of 0 0.50 and 0 0.60 or in between these two values is acceptable. So you need to understand uh, that your sample size really matters. So uh, the next thing is the determinant of the correlation matrix should be greater than this value. A lower score might indicate that group of three or more questions have high interconnection. So uh, intercorrelation. So uh, when uh, you find some correlation, uh, 
uh, with a significance level or high significance level. So it means there, there is an inter correlation between those factors and you need to identify those factors. So the threshold for the item removal should be reduced until this condition is satisfied. The, the Cronbach alpha coefficient for each uh, scale can also be calculated. So you need to uh, calculate the Cronbach alpha also. Step number nine, which is the last step uh, in EFA procedure, if the goal of analysis is to create scale of a unique item, then the meaning of the group of unique item which load on each factor should be interpreted to give each factor a meaningful name. So whenever you need to develop a scale and you need to verify uh, the EFA procedure on that scale, uh, after, after the validity of that scale, you, you need to provide some meaningful name to that scale in order to verify that scale. So this is, this is how uh, we can apply the EFA procedure uh, during uh, uh, our uh, whole analysis. So uh, how can we analyze data using the EFA procedure? So let's take an example. I would like to let you know uh, the EFA procedure using the EFA. And this is the last thing that I want to uh, let you know uh, using the SPSS because after this, uh, we does not need uh, anything from SPSS to learn more. Uh, we simply need the smart PLS uh, to analyze the further data. So EFA is basically the procedure which is run through SPSS while CFA is the procedure which is run through uh, the smart PLS. So uh, because EFA and CFA both are related with each other, therefore uh, I want to let you know about the EFA procedure first, then I will let you know the CFA procedure. So uh, let me open the IBM statistic file and uh, let's suppose uh, I want to take some file, uh, some data uh, from our last session. Yes, this one. Let's suppose I am taking uh, the data of this file and I want to analyze the EFA procedure on this data. So it, it is open now and you can see this data and you can uh, find that there are some factors that are measuring some concepts. Like you can see there is a factor one, SGT, SGT2, SGT3, SGT4, SGT5 and SGT6. These six factors are measuring a scale which is named as SGT. And the full form of this scale is short duration training. So if I want to measure short duration training, I need to have six items. SGT1, SGT2, SGT3, SGT4, SGT5, SGT6. So I, how I came to know that these factors actually measure the short duration training, I, uh, how I get to know. I basically use the scale validation procedure using the EFA. The EFA told me that these six items are basically relevant to a particular concept. All right. Uh, let's suppose uh, that uh, uh, I don't know whether these uh, factors are related with the same constructs or not. So how can I identify that uh, these six uh, factors are related with a similar concept? and the next five factors are related with another construct or another scale, uh, then uh, the next four factors are related with another construct. So how I can differentiate if, if I have a number of questions, let's suppose I have uh, question number one, which start from eighth row, and uh, I have question number, let's suppose up to, 46. So let's suppose I have a number of questions and I didn't give them any item name. I, I simply give them question one, question two, question three. So how can I understand that some of these questions are related with a particular concept? So EFA will let you know if you are developing a scale. So how we can do this? Uh, we can just go simply, uh, let's suppose I will give them name 
for your convenience question 1 it is it is the usual procedure that we apply using scale development if if we are developing a scale we need to have some questions which are not used in any previous research or uh, we are developing a new scale so we may have a number of questions like question one question two question three question four question five question six in the same way i would refer it to question number seven question number eight similarly question number nine question number 10 question number 11 in the same way question number 12 question number 13 question number 14 and question number 15 let's suppose these are the question that i have asked in my questionnaire and i don't know uh, which which of these questions are related to which concept i don't know so how can i decide how can i decide if if i have put it just question and i don't know uh, which questions is relevant to which concept so this procedure is known as efa procedure so how this is uh, used or how this is analyzed so you just need to go to the analyze uh, there is an option with the name of dimension reduction uh, because we are going to reduce some of the factors that are uh, not relevant to a particular concept or they may have uh, a commonality value less than 0 0.30 or they may have uh, high correlation or multicollinearity. We may need to reduce that. So that is why this procedure is called dimension reduction. So we need to click on this and we need to click on the factors. And you will find that uh, you have a number of questions over here and you don't know uh, with which factors they are related. So you simply need to put those questions over here. Now, there are uh, a number of options uh, available uh, on, on your screen that is descriptive, that is extraction, that is rotation, uh, that is scores, that is option. Uh, so you need to click one by one and I will let you know which options you need to select. Uh, first, uh, first of all, you need to select the descriptive option. Uh, you have uh, you have here a lot of options over here. Uh, from the statistics, you need to click initial solution because uh, you are at initial level of your EFA. So you need to click on the initial solution. So it is already checked, and you need to be uh, check it, uh, and you need you need to confirm that it should be checked. So uh, in correlation matrix, you need to select coefficient. You need to select significance level. You need to select determinants and you need to select KMO and Barlett test of sphericity. Basically, these are the options you need to uh, check over here in the descriptive options. Uh, the remaining options remains the same uh, as it is and you need to click the continue. Then uh, you go to the extraction uh, uh, button. You need to open it and you will find there are a lot of methods which were provided over here. Uh, by default, principal component analysis or principal component method as a method of extraction is selected. Uh, so you keep it because uh, as a first procedure we will use and as a preference mode we will use this procedure. Uh, from uh, the remaining part, you need to select the correlation matrix because we need to find out the correlation you need to uh, display the unrotated factor solution you need to display the discrete plot and then uh, there there is a extraction method over here uh, the first method is eigenvalue method uh, if you remember i have told you that uh, you you might have the option that uh, you you allow uh, the system that it will decide that how many factors you want to select like uh, in the step number four I have told you that uh, 
by default the SPSS is given by a Kaser criterion, the eigen value greater than one principal. So if if you uh, let the software to decide that how many component you want to extract uh, from these number of questions, uh, you, you, you should choose the eigenvalue principle. But if you have a specific number in your mind that I want to uh, extract uh, three uh, three uh, component or I want to extract uh, four component, then you need to use the fixed number of factors to extract. For example, if I would like to know that uh, if I, I if I, uh, I want to establish uh, four uh, concepts out of these 15 question or I want to establish, uh, you can say five concepts out of these 15 questions or I want to establish three concepts out of these 15 questions. I can I can uh, let the software know those fixed number like I want to establish only three uh, scales from these 15 questions. I can use this number. But uh, as a first procedure, you, you should always uh, allow the software that it will decide that how many component to extract from your questions. So uh, this is the most preferred method. But if you want to go with the fixed number of uh, uh, scales, you can use it. Uh, but I, I would personally prefer the eigenvalue method and most of the researcher, majority of the researcher use the eigenvalue uh, method. So doing this, uh, you, you, you can click continue. Then you go to the rotation. Uh, option. I have told you about the rotation uh, methods. Uh, if, if you remember uh, from my previous discussion, I will let you know. Uh, there are some rotation methods that uh, I have discussed with you. Yes, these are the uh, rotation methods. Uh, I want to revise here <clears throat> which method is useful at what situation. Uh, if you suppose that your uh, factors are not correlated with each other. It means the number of questions I have selected uh, in my questionnaires, they are not highly correlated. Then I, I should use the orthogonal uh, rotation method. And uh, the technique which is used under this method is very max technique. But if, if uh, 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 I have an idea that uh, correlation is involved uh, within the structure or within the method or within the questions or uh, the question, the number of questions are highly correlated, then uh, I need to select the oblique rotation. And under oblique rotation, I have two methods that is direct oblimin and promax rotation. So uh, the same is applies here. The same applies here, like uh, you can see. Yes. You can see a method very max and the second one direct oblimin. So uh, at first we don't know whether there is a correlation uh, between the questions or not. At first we don't know. So we suppose here that there is no correlation here because at first uh, we cannot uh, uh, decide whether the correlation is involved in our data or not. But if we analyze the correlation first and then we decide whether we need to use very max or direct oblimin, then we can have this. So uh, you simply need to click on very max option and you need to click on continue, then go to the scores. You may have to click on save method as a variable. Uh, then you need to click on uh, display factor score, uh, regression score, and you need to click continue. Then go to the option button and uh, you need to click sorted by size and suppress small coefficient and here you need to provide a minimum value uh, of your uh, commonality if if you want that uh, uh, the commonality less than 30 should automatically be deleted it will delete those values if you provide a minimum value of 20.20 it will delete uh, the commonality values automatically uh, uh, less than this value. So uh, this is the basic criteria. Majority of the researcher basically require this value. I have uh, told you from uh, here, just uh, wait a second. Uh, there was a value that I previously 
let you know. Uh, yes, from here. Uh, you can see they require a cumulative value at least 0 0.20. And I have told you that majority of the researcher are agree that you should use at least a value of commonality of at least 0 0.30. So maybe I have uh, discussed with you in some other slides that minimum value, th that is this value, yes. This is the important guideline. This is given in the important guidelines. I have told you that the minimum value should be uh, 0.30. So in this case, uh, you need to provide at least 0 0.30 value as a surpass small coefficient value. So you click it and now uh, you are ready to run the EFA procedure. You just need to need to click the OK button and you will see some interesting results over here. So first of all, you need, uh, you, you see a correlation matrix. Uh, for the, uh, for, for your understanding, uh, at first, I am ignoring the correlation matrix because it will requires a lot of time. Uh, first of all, you need to see the KMO and Barlett test. And you see a value uh, of Meyer of sampling adequacy. This value is 0.913. This value should be greater than 0 0.50 as per the guideline that I have provided over here. Just a minute. I will let you know. Uh, there was a value given over here regarding your uh, Kaser and Barlett test. The value was just uh, over here. Yes. Uh, this value, this is step number seven. There was a value written over here with 0 0.50. Uh, I remember I have discussed with you. Yes, this is. Uh, in in the step number eight, it is written that uh, check the adequacy of sample size using the KMO statistic. The minimum acceptable score for this test is 0 0.5. So 0 0.5 should be the value of minimum value of adequacy of sample size. So here you can see, here you can see the sampling adequacy is 0 0.913, which is greater than 0 0.50, which is the minimum required. It means uh, our sampling adequacy is good. And you can also see the significance value of your sampling adequacy. So it means uh, your sampling adequacy is uh, significant as well as it has a good value, which is greater than uh, 0 0.50. Uh, but if this value is less than 0 0.50, it is not considered a good value. And we need to reconsider whether uh, the commonality value of our questions uh, are good or not. So you need to see again the commonalities and you can see you have uh, decided to uh, retain only those factors which have the commonality uh, of uh, less than of, of greater than 0 0.30. So here you can see all the values, question one, question two, up to question number 15. All the values are showing uh, the commonality is value greater than 0 0.30. So if any one of these values are uh, indicate a commonality value less than 0 0.30, we need to remove that from our EFA and we need to rerun the EFA again. Like uh, for example, for example, for the point of your, uh, uh, you can say for the point of your understanding, let's suppose uh, that question number 11 show the commonality value as a 0 0.25, let's suppose 0 0.25. Uh, it, it means that we have to remove question number 11 and we need to rerun the procedure again. So how can we do that? We go to the analyze, we go to the dimension reduction, we go to the factors and we need to remove that particular question from here by putting it again uh, into it and running the procedure again. It will, it will exclude that variable and it will show the commonality values of the remaining questions. 
So as we have already uh, commonalities value greater than 0 0.30, so we are we are quite happy with these values. But this is not what we are looking for. Uh, this is the total variance explained. Uh, as a point of understanding, you need to understand that uh, the percentage of variance should be greater than 0 0.50. Uh, if you if you remember from uh, our slides, uh, I have told you uh, the guideline regarding it. Uh, you can see over here. This is written, I think, yes. The proportion of total variance explained by the retained factor is at least 50%. This, this is the point uh, that I was referring to. So you need to understand uh, this point. The proportion of total variance explained by the retained factor is at least 50%. So you can see uh, the retained factor over here. It means the retained factor. Uh, which is appearing over here. So the percentage of variance is greater than 50% over here. It means uh, we are uh, coming with a good thing over here. Then a scree plot. The scree plot indicate that uh, the EFA procedure recognize only one factor or one, uh, uh, you can say, scale uh, for measuring these 15 question. It means if, if you can see, it has identified only the one component or one scale. Uh, it means the EFA understand that all these questions can measure uh, one single concept. It means over here. So you can see it here. Then you can also find out in the component matrix that it have also identified there is only one component that is measuring this particular concept. So you can find the same values over here, uh, coefficient matrix, and you can find component score covariance matrix. So this is basically considered your factor loading values, and it should be greater than 0 0.70 uh, for a, a successful matter. Now, let's suppose if we uh, let the software know that uh, we want uh, three uh, component of these questions. So how will it analyze? Go to the analyze button, go to the dimension reduction, go to the factor. And uh, in the descriptive, nothing to change. In the extraction, not, yes, uh, in the extraction button, you need to fix the number as a three. Let's suppose I want that there should be three component out of these uh, 16 questions. So I need to click continue. I need to click OK. The, the remaining procedure should be remain same. You just need to uh, change the procedure in extraction. So you need to click OK. And you will find something more interesting over here. The Barlet procedure showing the same results. The extraction procedure showing the same results. Uh, but you will find that in total variance explained, you, you will find that uh, it has provided the result in three rows. It means it has identified three different, uh, you can say, the components. It, 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 it may state a component one, a component two, a component three. And you can say, uh, you, you can see the total variance as a percentage of total variance uh, is being shown here. Uh, it is increasing. Uh, with factor one, uh, they are showing 63%. Uh, variance which is greater than 50% uh, with factor 2 it is uh, accumulated uh, increasing by 5% and it is showing 69.075 and uh, with third component it is it is showing 74.528 it means the inclusion of each factors uh, increasing the cumulative uh, variance which is a good thing uh, and uh, the minimum requirement is fulfilled over here you can also see the scree plot and it is also indicating the same results. Uh, but if you see the component matrix, uh, it, it, it will show you some 
different results like uh, in component two and in component three, some of the factors are not identified while in rotated component, you, you can find out that uh, which questions are related with first scale, which are uh, uh, related with second scale and which, which questions are related with third scale. So how can we identify, we need to see the rotated component matrix. So this is how we can measure a concept uh, easily. So how can we decide whether the components are related or not? If you see, you need to, you need to verify these values greater than 0 0.70 or at least 0 0.50 greater than 0 0.50 is the minimum requirement. So you can see that question 14, question number five, question number three, question number 15, question number one, and question number 13. They are related with the same measure because their values are greater than uh, 0 0.50. Uh, and some of the researcher also says that uh, you can also uh, go with 0 0.40, but we can say that these questions are related with first component. Then uh, for the second component, if you, if you would see question number seven is related with the second component with the highest value. Uh, question number eight is also related with second uh, component. Question number 11 is also related with second component. Question number nine is also related with second component. So if I copy this table into a word file, I may have a clear understanding uh, of what I am basically searching over here. So let me open this file uh, as a Word document and I will let you know uh, what are the results of our EFA and how we can uh, uh, measure the concepts using the EFA. So let it just open. Yes. Now, what I want to make you clear over here, uh, you just need to see clearly. You are seeing that there is a value in component one and there is another value of component in component two. It's mean question number 14 is measuring the question one as well as question two, uh, sorry, component two or uh, scale two. But in scale two, its value is less than 0 0.70. So we can remove it simply if the value is less than 0 0.70. Uh, question five is measuring uh, first scale and it is also measuring the third scale. So in the value in the third scale is less than 0 0.70. So we can remove it. In the same way, question number three is measuring uh, the first scale and it is also measuring the second scale, but the value in the second scale for question number three is less than 0 0.70, we can remove it. Uh, in the same way, question number 15, you can remove that value. Question number one, because it is showing a much greater value in question number one, so we can remove it from question number three and uh, yes, from component second. This is good. You can you can remove this from here. Similarly, question number 11 is measured in question one, question two, question three, but the highest value in uh, within the component two. So question 11 is basically removed from component one and component three. In the same way, question number nine, you can see it is showing in question one and also in question number, uh, sorry, component number two, but it is indicating higher value in component number two. So we can remove it from here. In the same way, question number 12 is only appearing in component number three, while the question number two is showing in component number one and component number three. So in component number three, it has a reasonable value. So we can remove it from component one. In the same way, you can remove question number six from component two. In the same way, you can remove question number four for, from component uh, one, component two. 
in the same way question number 10 from component 10 and 0.458 from component 2. So in this way, uh, we can finalize that uh, these questions are basically measuring the three different components. Let's say uh, uh, we will join these particular uh, measures to form a different variable. We, we can join three different three different factors to measure uh, another variable and we can form these factors to identify another variable. So we can form three different variables using these factors. So this is how uh, factor analysis basically applies. So I hope you uh, understand the whole procedure that uh, how you can validate your uh, uh, scales, your questionnaires, items, how can you validate those items? How can you measure a particular concept uh, if you have uh, some number of questions in your data set and you are not sure uh, whether they are related with two different constructs or two different measures or two different scales or three different scales or four different scales? You, you just need to align them. Sometimes uh, the SPSS automatically uh, decide whether these are related with uh, two different concepts or not. So let run uh, the procedure with all of the factors that how the SPSS understand the other factors too. So let's suppose we will run the procedure including all other factors which we have not assigned as a question number. So let it put it there. In the extraction box, let the software decide how many uh, factors it will display over here. So just click OK and let's see whether the software personally decide to find out the values or not. Yes, yes, uh, it has decided. You can see KMO Barlet test and it has provided 0.86 which is greater than 50% and it is also significant. You can also see the commonality values which are greater than 0 0.30. So you can see there is no any value over here, which is uh, less than 0 0.30. So we can include all the values in our process. And we can see the total variance explained. It has identified that you can create six uh, constructs or you can create six scales uh, from your items. So you, you can see that uh, your cumulative percentage is increasing by including each uh, new construct. So if, if we increase uh, our constructs to up to seven, it will, it will provide a better, a more better results over here. So we can conclude here uh, that how many factors we can uh, display over here. Uh, you need to see the rotated component matrix and you need to see uh, in which uh, component uh, the values are uh, showing the higher values. Like uh, you can see that PS12 is very low in uh, first component. So you can remove it. Uh, the other values should also be removed and PS12 should be removed at all uh, from the procedure. You, you can remove it and you, you can rerun the procedure because its value is very low. In the same way, PS14, you can see the highest value in uh, second part, uh, second component, and so on. So you can you can decide how many uh, how many components you need to uh, use uh, to measure uh, a particular concept. After one minute, the meeting will be ended. So you need to join again using the same link so that we will start uh, the uh, smart PLS procedure. I will let you know uh, the introduction and uh, some basics of smart PLS and uh, installation procedure. So please join again uh, using the same link.